Your Steve Jones Show podcast is loading now. The Steve Jones Show podcast is sponsored by Sunbury Motors, North 4th Street in Sunbury, and Sunbury Motors Kia, routes 11 and 15 in Hummel's Wharf. Guy we thinks 54-0 in the other games, Tyler Donahue, 247 Sports. Hey, how are you doing today? Hey, good afternoon. Good to hear from you. Great to hear from you. This is always a big recruiting weekend that's uh, going to really kick into probably high gear starting tomorrow. Uh, so give us at least a couple things that you're looking for this weekend on that front. Well, I think there's a big opportunity whenever you get not just some of your top targets, but you get your commits in town and you're going to get the signees in town, the, the incoming freshmen who signed last winter, uh, you know, the group that's expanding that is going to sign next winter. Uh, and they're going to be around a bunch of players that, you know, ultimately they're going to try to find personality fits and, and establish relationships and build on things that have been done virtually. And, you know, it's well established. It's the first time that there's an event like this in Beaver Stadium in April since 2019. And so you're missing on some golden opportunities. This is really a chance for, uh, I think, Penn State not just to, to push some guys closer toward commitments, and we know those tend to pop up around the spring game, if not on the day of, maybe the, the, the few days after as guys kind of consider things. But I think it's a chance to really lay the groundwork with a bunch of the younger regional prospects who are going to get a chance to come to town. The guys who are going to be sophomores or juniors in the high school field next fall. You missed out on a chance to do some of that early familiarity and rapport building with some of those in-state players or guys from Maryland, New Jersey, Virginia, kind of that recruiting Brett basket. So I think it's a chance there with 2024 and 2025 prospects to encourage them to get back to town in the summer, get back to town for a real game at Beaver Stadium, and ultimately use official visits in Happy Valley. Uh, what do you think having potentially fifty to 70,000 people does for a weekend like this when you have so many people there that are, quote, checking you out? Yeah, I mean, the volume of people and the weather forecast looks promising. It's a good combination at this time of year. And, and I, I think just to show up and – and see the loyalty of a fan base, uh, understanding that um, for what is a glorified practice, uh, the kind of party that's going to be put on uh, by the fan base on Saturday. I, I, I don't know what the number will be of, of the turnout, but I think it's going to be a really good showing based on everything. Uh, and, and when you talk about a recruit coming, coming into town, it's not just the player. It's mom, dad, yeah. it maybe a carpool. And so you go home and you're talking about that experience. It's not just the recruit uh, solo, you spend the whole time in a caravan, maybe with some of your high school buddies, maybe with your cousins, whatever. And, and if you had a great time, and, and odds are you're going to have a good time if you yeah. enjoy football and you enjoy college campus, hey, if it, it, five or six hours uh, home, you could feel a, a certain type of way about Penn State compared to when you first got to campus. Any, uh, uh, any particular individuals that are coming to town uh, that you're taking at least a long, long look at to see what their reaction is? Yeah, I think there's a, a few linebackers. One is uh, a bit more familiar with campus at this point is Tony Rojas out of Virginia. Uh, he's a guy that, that that's remained, uh, uh, you know, uh, they've remained very consistent with despite the defensive coordinator linebacker change. I think they're well positioned there with Rojas. And then there's a couple of brothers, uh, twins out of Florida, Andrew and Michael Harris, that, that are expected on campus. I think that's big when you can get guys long distance up. Uh, for an opportunity like this, because we've seen it pay off with players like Zane Duran and Kevon Lee. Sometimes it takes you know, one weekend, one visit, and all of a sudden you can't shake that image of the campus out of your head. You can't shake that feeling that you had at Beaver Stadium out of your mind. And all of a sudden you're saying, I might be ready to get on a plane and, and go 1,200 miles away from home for college. And, and then I, I think you look at 2024 class because there's going to be a bunch of those players and a bunch of them who already have Penn State offers, the rising high school juniors. Quinton Martin, you know, if you're following Pennsylvania high school football, you're probably already well aware of this kid. Uh, he's out of Western Pennsylvania, and I think we've had him labeled as an athlete. He may very well be that next five-star running back in the state of Pennsylvania. They just signed one in Nick Singleton. They've got a great history of keeping those kind of kids home. And so getting Quinton Martin back to campus and, and building on what they've already established, the bond with him and his family, I think that's going to be important every single time uh, he heads to town. All right, so let's now transition to this year's team. What are you looking for, Tyler, uh, on Saturday? What, what's on your checklist of what you want to look at since you, it's an opportunity to see all of it in front of you instead of maybe just a couple of segments in a, in a weekly practice? 
Sure, yeah. You, you know that we get our peaks at weekly practice for 15 to 20 minutes. It's special teams. It's ball security for the most part. I, you know, I want to see some 11-on-11 11 11 reps. I know there's going to be some thud tempo, but there will be some live action. So why not peel back the curtain on a couple of these freshmen that everyone keeps telling us about? Zane Durant on the defensive front and Nick Singleton at running back. I know they brought in a, a really strong group of freshmen overall, and, and they're across the field, but those are the two names that – you talk to coaches, you talk to people in the building, you talk to, to any of these players on the record, they are not shying away from, from really praising these guys who are, what, three months into their mm-hmm. college careers. Right. So, hey, are they going to go out and, and, and you know become All-Americans at the college level because they go have a good game at Beaver Stadium to finish off spring ball? No. But, hey, you, you, if you send 70,000 people home and, and they just saw Nick Singleton dash 80 yards for a touchdown or they just saw Zane Durant repeatedly blow up the offensive backfield, there's a little bit more of a, a tangible buzz about some new faces on this team. I think there's a little fatigue with some of the familiar names with the team, I think with the starting quarterback, and I think it's good for there to be some fresh names, and we're hearing about them. This is really that chance to flash, and, and I'll throw in newcomer Mitchell Tinsley. I think it's important yeah. for him if, to really step up and, and kind of make that seamless transition. It sounds like he is well-positioned to do so. I'm very high on Malik Mega and the tantalizing talent that he has. But I think if you're trying to look at a kind of that high floor guy who can step up with Jahan Dotson gone, Mitchell Tinsley seems to fit that bill. So, you know, you want to see him out there working with the quarterbacks as well. You referenced the quarterbacks. So over a couple of hours, you'll see uh, good pieces of Christian Veyu, Bo Prabula, and uh, Drew Aller. Mm. So just, you know, look, it's two hours on a Saturday afternoon in April. But what will you be looking for, pro and con, just as a foundational moment? Yeah, um, I think body language is going to be interesting to watch in the quarterback position. How are they kind of dictating to their teammates when they're trying to get things coordinated pre-snap? Um, how are they communicating with Mike Yersich and with Sean Clifford? I fully expect Sean Clifford to be an observer for much of the action on Saturday. And I think that he'll be an extension of the coaching staff and, and kind of trying to help these guys along. I do think Christian Veyu is a bit of a forgotten man when people look at this Penn State roster and talk about potential impact players and people who could really compete. I, I'm higher on Christian Veyu than others, but I know that's because a lot of people want to skip right on down to, to number 15, <laughs> and Drew Aller. And, and, I mean, he popped off the field. We've, we've seen him out there, six foot five, 230-plus pounds. He's every bit of that. Um, you know, got to know him a little bit during his recruitment. And he's one guy that we haven't really seen go up against live bullets. Um, so uh, that's something that I'm really curious about. We've, we've heard some good thing about playmakers emerging in this Penn State defense. I know that Drew has a lot of trust in his arm, and, and Jair Brown last night was raving about Drew Aller's arm, but you got to understand when to not take that chance and, and understand you're not throwing the ball downfield in Ohio, uh, on Ohio high school football field. So I want to see a bit of his decision-making and, and how that, that kind of checks out. But, I mean, it's going to be really fun. It's going to be fun. It's in a much healthier position overall in that quarterback room, certainly, than it was last spring. Uh, but I think people are, are going to come away from this one and, and probably remind themselves, get a little bit of a refresher, that Christian Bayou belongs at this level of football, and he's not necessarily going to step aside without putting up his own fight. Yeah, I think the, the coaches realize that as well. Uh, <laughs> what When you saw Bayou last year in the brief time that you've seen him, so far what kind of improvement have you at least been able to witness even though you haven't seen obviously a lot of the quarterback drills and things like that yeah well, i think he's always been um a better athlete than giving credit for yes. even at the high school level so you look at the testing numbers that he produced and, and and just watch the way he played football in the high school field and moved around uh but i think really I, you wanted to know what was his demeanor like making the transition from you know, a, a high level of high school football at the Bullis School, but he didn't have a senior season. So he's sitting at home for a full year. You're away from that locker room. You're away from leading the team into the into the game. And I think that's one thing that I've heard on Christian repeatedly, especially this spring, is he has a control about him when he's operating with this offense. Uh, you know, it's not Sean Clifford, the leader, the, the fourth-year team captain, uh, and, then a, and then a huge gap. And it sounds like Christian has made up some ground in a guy who is – fueling this offense on the practice field. So I, I think that is a really important step forward uh, to have that presence. I think that, that that was a big question mark for me this time last year. Did they have any kind of quarterback presence behind Sean Clifford? Those two freshmen, very high on them, but I still think we have a ways to go to figure out that 
Christian showed it a bit in that Rutgers game last year. I think this guy has a bit of boxy to him as well. Um, so there's a lot to like about, about Christian Veyu, and I think considering he had his senior season wiped off the board you know, and, and kind of how his international recruitment played out and some of the restrictions that were in place with COVID, he was further along and further ahead of schedule, I think, coming out of 2021 than I anticipated. Penn State can play as many as – I don't know, 18 to 24 players on defense during the course of a given afternoon uh, because, you know, they want to keep people fresh. One of the moves that they made was Zaki Wheatley from corner to safety. How interested are you to see how that plays out in watching him on Saturday? Sure sounds like a genius move <laughs> so far. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, we've gotten a, a glance at, that, at Zaki mostly in drill work at safety and I mean, the, the, the length with him has always been a, a major asset going back to his recruitment. But I think what we continue to hear is he's become a bit of a vacuum with the football. I mean, he was an exceptional offensive talent at the high school level. I think he warranted power five attention for what he could do with the ball in his hands. But uh, at safety, it certainly sounds like he is every bit involved to start alongside Jair Brown. Now, they're not going to name a starter at that position, I would imagine, until very late in August. Um, but I think Zaki Wheatley, uh, takeaways leader, uh, we got that confirmed yesterday thus far this spring. Um, so I, I think that says a lot, not only to, you know, it, it's one thing to look comfortable at a position when you transition to it. And I know Keaton Ellis, you know, had some, sh- some moments of, of uncomfortable uh, moments last year in his first semester mm-hmm. at safety. But in this situation, it's not just he's comfortable. He is out there thriving, and he seems to be impacting what the offense can do. Uh, so for a guy to be uh, you know, already operating at that kind of speed and with that kind of instincts at a new position, uh, Anthony Poindexter has something special brewing in that safety room right now, and that says a lot considering they just lost an All-American. Right, exactly. I just talked about that All-American on a giant New York Giant shows. On, uh, mm. The... Uh, I'll wrap up with this. Uh, I believe uh, James was asked about P.J. Mustafer on Wednesday night. Uh, yep. what, what does it say about the progress he's made, and what can that mean, not just as the player on the field, but also one of the leaders to have him back in the mix once they get going with training camp? Yeah, I think I think uh, PJ Mustafer is you know, uh, arguably the heart and soul of this locker room. There's a few guys in the conversation, but he's right there. That hasn't mm-hmm. changed with him being sidelined. But you know, the way the way James Franklin phrased it was that uh, his understanding is PJ is ahead of schedule in his recovery from that injury last October. Um, and, you know, that's always good to hear. The one thing he also wanted to add there is they've been conservative with their approach and in, in, in getting him. I think that the goal has to be get him in the healthiest position to. You know, probably maybe initially start with a rep count but in August, but where he can be a full go in August. Now, uh, he, we've seen him out there maneuvering. Uh, mm-hmm. he, yeah. he is his usual jovial self. He, yes. looks, he looks great. Um, and, and I can't wait to see him in action. But, yeah, he, I mean, it's unfortunate what happened last year because he very may well have been on his way to an All-American kind of season and, and, and a may, maybe being talked about in a, in a different light for this NFL draft. But I still think he's got a great launch pad ahead of him. Um, and, and they are really, I mean, between him and Jair Brown, both being back on campus, uh, they lost a lot of defensive talent, but those are two linchpin personalities. And I know PJ has been right there every step of the way in the film room as these guys break down practice, been a good asset for Zane Durant. So it's good to hear that he's progressing well. And, and yeah, it's, it's been good progress in a lot of injury fronts. I mean, it's, it's unfortunate about Zariah Fisher, but, uh, you know, Adiza Isaac, Salim Wormley getting a lot of valuable reps right now, guys that they, they would have loved to have had in 2021. Absolute pleasure, Tyler. Thanks so much for your time today. Really appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Talk to you soon.